but we are here. So that's all it that matters. So let's go. Well, th th thank you. Thank you to uh, Mr. Spielberg. Now, vision, yeah. mission, project over a decade ago. Uh, so yes. much to go through. And you've pretty much done everything from, from marking out fields to number one photographer, <laughs> accountant, oh, treasurer, uh, uh, carrying goalposts, probably. Um, yeah. Casa, what, what does it stand for? What is it? And 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 how did you start all that? I'm throwing it all at you right I now. I know. All at once. Might as well get it started. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, when you start a project, you got to be able to or willing to do everything, right? Or learn everything. So that is what happened. Uh, CASA, Community Athletic Soccer Academy. That is what it stands for. And wow, it started back in 2008 and started small uh, with eight kiddos here in Denver. And then from there, we just keep working at it, keep working at it until we were able to be to where we are today. So you st you started small, uh, eight eight kiddos out there. Uh, what? Why was it soccer predominantly? I know it's in everybody's blood. It is a religion, and it's all global, as I see on the map that you have behind there. I'll touch on that later. <laughs> what 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 was the soccer aspect of saying I'm going to do this? You know, it it was actually something very personal. Uh, soccer changed my life. Uh, I started playing soccer way late in life, right? Most kiddos start about four years old. I started at 15. And when I started, I, I fell in love with it. And then like right away. And then it changed my life completely because, and that's one of the reasons why I started that organization, which is I went to college partly because of soccer. Soccer paid for my college. And of course, academics too, which I'm sure we're gonna get into it. But uh, soccer and academics was able to give me full ride to college. And my parents didn't have to worry about paying anything. So when I came out of college, which is when I started CASA, is uh, I was able to say like, okay, I want to do the same thing for other people that happened to me, but how can I do that? What can I do to open doors to young people for them to know that they can do it? They can go to college, play the sport, that sport that they love, plus get an education and for free if you are good enough and if you have good grades. That always goes hand in hand. So those first eight kiddos, right? Um... What, what, was it a combination of boys and girls? And, and, and you know, when did you you know, first start that team up and how did that evolve from there? Because I know, I know you're doing a great job and it's on the male and female side and education, we'll touch on that later. So those eight kiddos to form a team and move from there, how, how did that, what were your first, you know, motions on there to getting them playing? You know, uh, that is uh, such a good question because no, it was not boys and girls. It was mostly boys. And okay. when we started that organization, most of the teams were boys. And uh, as we went on, one of my biggest projects had always been to start the girls program. And I know it was going to be harder, but I wanted to start the girls program and give girls the same opportunity the boys have. Nowadays, I can honestly say that we are doing just that. Girls and boys all have equal, uh, it, all age groups we have available and they are playing top levels and we're giving these girls the same opportunity that we are giving the boys. And so that to me is something to be proud of. I know that both sets of um, players, the boys and the girls, uh, evolving from those early days, have actually progressed into several different levels. And mm -hmm. I know you've won tournaments and, 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 and championships <laughs> over that period of time. What, what satisfaction does, does, does that give you, not only providing players to play, but achieving that, that high success level? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't be more proud of 
everything that we're doing with both boys and girls. And uh, it's not just me, it's everybody else that is part of it and that's helping the program. Championships, you're talking about State Cup. Uh, and you know, when they go and represent Colorado Originals, we had a team, 2004 boys team, that went to Hawaii and play uh, Originals in Hawaii, which is an amazing experience for our kiddos. Uh, we had our 2008 boys, amazing team. They came from nothing, and then they won two state cup championships back to back like that's unheard of that's amazing and our girls team are coming up and doing the same thing so uh of course they win state tournaments uh they they win tournaments around the same top levels and then uh they're playing in the top premier teams so yeah, of course I am proud. Of course I'm satisfied. And it's thanks to all the hard work that we all do, not just me, everybody else in our program. So yeah, I'm proud. <laughs> I know those levels as well, just to play, just to play for the sheer joy and love of the game. And you know, trophies yeah. and tournaments and champions are one thing, yeah. but they all roll into one. And I know that you specialize, you emphasize passionately, not just the game but the education side of it to to your membership yeah it is a most it is a most <laughs> how do you I, I know you how do you enforce that as like hey education and soccer happens with it what what, what what's your take on that in terms of education academics oh that is extremely important because look Soccer, you can only play it for so long, right? Even if you become a pro, you can only play it for so long. I mean, Ronaldo is amazing and he's almost out, right? Uh, everybody's right. calling him old <laughs> because he is old for soccer. So why you, get why you got left is your education. What can you do after soccer, even if you go pro? which is very, a very small percentage. Of course, we want to support everybody's dream and try to get there. But if you get there, then what you had afterwards, your education, that no one can take away. You can carry it the rest of your life and work with it and do something with it. So for me, education has always been important. I personally took it very serious since a very young age. My parents obviously pushed that on us, which uh, all of us are college educated, you know, got a degree and make sure we do something with it after soccer. So give me an example of, I know what's coming. Give me an example of a wonder, you've got many stories. Give me an exam, a, example oh. of a wonderful story with, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Rodrigo and Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, this is Tell something I'm extremely proud. <laughs> yes, Jesus and Rodrigo. God, I, I am so proud of these two boys. Um, they are amazing. Okay, now they had many choices. Yes, that's them, that's them. Love them. They have many cho choices because they are great athletes, both of them. Um, and they, Rodrigo was. Uh, came in about 10 years old. Jesus came in even younger. He was one of the original eight, right? And uh, he played in Casa for a very, very long time. And, but they were also very good students, both of them. And as we went on, uh, when it came down to choosing a college, they had to choose between playing soccer in, you know, a smaller school or this is the great part. Uh, going to Duke and get a free education uh, at Duke University. So what they asked me what I recommend. Of course, I'm going to say Duke. I mean, there's nothing <laughs> better than getting a great education from a great school. So both of them are at Duke University getting, you know, free education. What else can you ask after that? And of course, they are playing right. soccer. They're just not playing soccer on the top level. <laughs> that's fine the, is is you know the perception sometimes is you know we miss the boat in terms of got to play d1 got to play d2 gotta, would you look at it as like that look hang on education but you can still play you'll you'll find that let soccer happen and education 
Is that was that the Duke influence from you on on, on those boys <laughs> and probably across your membership? You know, um, it is, it is, uh, because like I say, education comes first. Education comes first. And I know, I know that we are a soccer club. So our main focus should be soccer, or that's uh, at least the idea of it. But I had always thought that education has to come first because you can be an amazing player. And I can give you an example. Our first voice team that we had, we had amazing players. And Freddie, Edgar, many of those players that were just super talented. I remember going to a showcase, actually here, Real Colorado showcase. They played top level, they won the tournament, these boys were about to graduate. We got so many offers. You talking about from everywhere with our boys, right? And of course, I'm all like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And I'm uh, sending letters and doing all these things for these boys uh, to making sure they're getting into the right college. Then when they check their grades, and remember, this is our first boys team that's graduating. When they check their grades, they're like, hey, uh, he can't come to the school. It doesn't matter how good he is. We want him here, but he can't come to the school because of his grades. Uh, that was right. staggered. That, that was hard, right? Uh, because uh, yeah. you try so hard to help them and tell them this, but they don't see it. They think that in a way they're going to go right from club to pro, right? That's that's kind of like a lot of their idea. And that's not the way it works. So they still play in college. It said that they went to a smaller college, a, a two-year college. And then from there, they went to a D2 uh, school. They still got scholarships. They still got everything paid for, which I am still very proud of them. Uh, and it, it was a lot of kiddos in the team that were able to do that. But just know that if you don't have good grades, you won't be able to go to the best schools, even if you are a very talented soccer player. And that's where we want to be able to tell you like, hey, do you need support? And that's why we partner up with a lot of organizations to be able to support these kids and to make sure the grades are up and they're doing great. That way we can um, send them to the right schools or the schools that they want to go to. You know, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You know, when you had this 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 brainstorming idea and and, and, it, and it's come to fruition over 10, 12 years now. Did did you did you come across any anybody say, hey, I've got this idea. This is what I'm doing. Are you on board? And and, and did did come, did did people come to you to say, yeah, I, I, I want to be part of this when you set those foundations with that brainstorming idea? Oh, no. <laughs> just just to answer your question, that, that straight up. No. Uh, it, when you have, uh, I always been told that I need to run Casa like a business. Um, and yeah, sure, I get it. Um, I mean, I have seven, seven uh, different emphasis and four of them are in business when I graduated college. So of course I understand business, uh, but, <sighs> not everything is about business and casa was more about helping our community helping our kids helping our future leaders which is like okay let's try to figure out what they need and how we can help and when you pitch uh, stuff to people uh it's like hey we help trying to help the community everybody else uh, comes in and says hey i want to be part of it but what am i going to get out of it right and mm, no, because it's not really about uh, making money or doing uh, anything like that for anybody. So it's more about what can we do for our community, for our people. I hope you've, I answered your question. You said in there, um, <laughs> uh, future leader. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you did, and 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 that leads me. I do listen on occasions to people. Uh, yeah, there, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> You, you said future leaders in there uh, and, th and then no at the beginning. Has that, with that community environment on, on, on a business front, money doesn't matter, we need to get this community together. Have people come forward from, from that, you know, that period of time to say, I get it, I want to be on board with this because I want to help generate 
future leaders. Has that evolved over that period of time once the wheels were in motion? Yes, yes. And, and that's where uh, a lot of partnerships come in, right? Uh, nowadays, we definitely right. have different partnerships and we are working with different foundations and organizations to make things happen. And I, I, if you don't mind, I would love to name some because I think that what they're doing is an amazing work. And um, for, for example, in our girls' side, we have uh, the Latina First Foundation. They what they focus on is on girls and making sure that they keep um, scholarships for girls to go to college. And you know what? Two of our girls have gotten all four years paid for by this foundation. So I am extremely yeah. proud of that to say that. So Latinas First Foundation, they raise money and then they uh, cover young Latina girls here in Colorado to go to college. And uh, we are part of that and we are super proud of that. So that's one organization, right? We have, uh, I, I'm sure you have seen it on our page, but we have uh, the Power of One Foundation with Mackenzie. Yes. Uh, they, <laughs> she, she's doing amazing work, by the way. Uh, and I will support her always. Uh, but uh, her foundation, what they're doing is that they are helping single mothers. Uh, yes, that is our boy, Hector. Uh, they're helping single mothers uh, to making sure they don't have to worry about their kids and their soccer, uh, their, uh, what they, their fees or uniforms or anything like that. So like for example, Hector here in the picture, he got a scholarship for the year. So his mom doesn't have to worry about paying anything for him because he's already covered. And that is what she's doing for many kids across Colorado. And I'm just part, uh, happy to be part of it and happy that she chose to help us. So I love that. Uh, so I got to Do you want me to keep going? Because I got a couple other foundations here, too. Uh, You're one the star. that I'm proud. I, I want everybody to know. <laughs> go, go, Yay. go ahead, please continue. Well, By all means. <laughs> Uh, we also are happy to be part of the Colorado Soccer Foundation. I'm sure you know Wilmer, uh, Megan. Yeah, Curtis. Soccer City. Yeah, Soccer City. There we go. Oh, my God. Pretty soon we're going to be there playing. And I'm super happy to be part of it. There's only three clubs that are part of it. And we are one. It's not finished yet, but it's going to be finished here pretty soon. And yeah. that's where we're going to be playing. Some of our younger age group kiddos are going to be playing there. We were chosen. And thank you, guys. Thank you for choosing CASA. Um, we have a long relation going back. But I love the fact that we're part of it. Uh, so, yes, partnering up with other organizations is always important uh, because I always said the more we come together, the more we can do. So, let's you, you, keep it doing. You know, Anybody pardon that my wants interruption. To, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pardon my interruption. You, 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 you know the progression of your players through the youth and, and the, the very good people and the foundations coming in to, to help them get out there and play. And, become you know potential leaders of whatever environment or structure they go into in their adult life you've set up a structure as well you know within the community where they can continue to play adult soccer on home turf in 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 colorado i'd love you to touch on that again it's another relationship marabella that is true uh yes uh thanks for bringing that up definitely fc Denver. <laughs> FC Denver is another partnership that we are working Wonderful. on, it will, and it's it's all about because we are a youth club, right? We focus on kids, right? Uh, and our goal is to get them ready, uh, give them all the tools to make sure they go to college. That is our ultimate goal, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, we finish with them once they graduate high school. So the partnership with the FC Denver and with Eric, which I know you know Eric, he's amazing and everything he's doing is just blows me away all the time. <laughs> yeah, Eric, Carol, all those guys out there, great job. Yes, that is it. Our partnership kind of brings us together because we are merging because right from Casa, we want our kids to have a second home, right? Because that's what Casa means, a home. But we want you to have a second home. And what is that second home? 
FC Denver. You want to play? All right, keep playing. Don't give it up. Even if you go pro or don't go pro, whatever you're doing, don't give it up. Keep playing because you know you have it in your blood and you want to keep doing it. So there you go. Eric comes in, takes all our kiddos to adulthood and does the adult league. So I think it's perfect. It works great. So there you go. Yeah, there you have it. <laughs> It's it's almost like a conveyor belt, you know. You 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 uh, devising some skill sets, whether it be a foundation, a scholarship, the power of one, uh, the community, uh, passing them on, uh, hopefully to college in in terms of their education, providing the whole package with. You fell in love with the game. You still love the game. Here you can go and play adult soccer. Am I right in saying on the adult soccer? I just want to stay on that one. Um, could, could could they play at a, a high level within the FC Denver group? Oh, yeah. And, and at the same time, just purely recreational because they love the game still? Yes, uh, they do. Eric has uh, that competitor team and then they have and they have different competitor teams. They have the um, older team that is competitive and then they have a U23, for example, uh, that is the younger ones that go in and it's still competitive. There's a very higher level that they're playing in. And same thing for women, not just uh, men, but women. And then Brilliant. they have like like you say, that one where it's just like, eh, I don't want to put that much into it, but I still want to play it and I want to take it serious because it's also something that if you want to keep with and keep uh, stay serious with it, um, that's where you want to be in a team that uh, takes it serious. So those levels, you know, um, you, you, you're also looking at, you know, that, that, that sort of mental well-being, the physical well-being, try and keep fit. You can be... You can be not necessarily very good at the game of soccer, but, but you know, you just go and love it and enjoy it. And it's part of your, uh, I suppose, uh, physical health. And, and, and I, I'm going to move on to the Mass Fit, uh, which is, again, founder. What don't you do? So you're the founder of this. And, and, and I know you're a huge believer in not just the adults, but the youth as well, retaining some, some physical ability and, and and um you know mental wellness do you want to touch on the mass fit uh, program please oh goodness oh thank you thank you yes uh mass fit uh, we recently opened it's a gym and uh we work with all age groups and of course it's a community like everything else right so mass fit is a community just like a casa is a community um because you could become very attached to these people. And we do bootcamp classes, we do kickboxing classes, we do yoga classes and a personal training. And it doesn't matter what level you are in. If you come in, we will help you. And uh, it is something that I always been passionate about. One, because I obviously, uh, when I was a college athlete, I had bad injuries and I wanted to know more about my body. Like what's my body doing? What do I need to do to get better or avoid those injuries? So I started getting into it, into it. And then all of a sudden I'm getting certifications to become a personal trainer, a group fitness trainer. So of course, uh, I, I start falling in love with it. And then from there, I start teaching classes. I start doing a partnership with organizations like the um, Colorado Diabetes Association here in Denver. Uh, I was able to teach many classes with them and come in and train large groups of people and so on. You know, so yes, I, uh, I am proud to have MassFed. I am proud to help our community. And we are always there to help you. It doesn't matter what level you are, or if you hurt, you can come in and you can still get a good workout without getting more hurt. So yeah, <laughs> that's where we at. That, that would be my angle when all this social stuff goes away. And I know you cater for that now online as, as, as well mm -hmm. as at the facility, which is wonderful. So uh, just a personal question. Do you do the antique workout for the senior veterans like myself? Could you, could you cater for the old English guy? <laughs> oh, I'm sure we can figure it out. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure we can. Yes, yes. 
Well, anytime. Well, unfortunately, anytime. You know, I, <laughs> unfortunately I, I may be paying a visit uh, in the next few yeah. months when the transition comes over. So um, I'll bring my yeah. own mat just in case. Yeah, so thank you. For, appreciate there's, it. Yes, there's something for everyone. There's always something for everyone. So, hey, come on, stop by. We, doors are open. Uh, so, hey, <laughs> we are not a huge super big gym which it helps right especially now if you like to be more individual training or if you like to be in a smaller space you need to be out here with us yeah well at the end of the show we not we can give the details out anyway for Casper <laughs> and the whole work to your website and also the mass fit so um Thank you. Uh, my wife can't get me out of the house quick enough to go out and do stuff. <laughs> so I thought the fitness thing would would be a fantastic one. Hey, what's uh, you've got a? I'm I'm a I'm keen on maps. Uh, a bit a bit of a collector. <laughs> I think there was cartographer. I'm not sure, but you got a map behind you. <laughs> I see you. that. Uh, I see that behind you. So, yeah. <laughs> why have you got a map behind you? Oh, uh, there's a couple of reasons actually. Uh, one because soccer is a world sport, right? Everyone right. plays it around the world, right? So, yeah. A, <laughs> uh, second, because I love traveling and I getting to know other cultures or what we're doing in other countries is always good to know and find out and educate yourself right. about it. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's many things to it. So yes, I do have a map in my library because I love traveling. And it's also the fact that it is everyone in the world plays soccer. So there you go. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, 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 soccer is an international language, isn't it? That, that is right. That's right. You can go anywhere, anywhere in the world and somebody's playing with a soccer ball, especially if you go down the beach and there's always someone playing with a soccer ball. You can't miss that. So, hey, just go ready to play. I play with strangers all the time, all the time. So if you're going to travel just and you love soccer, believe me, you can do a pickup game almost everywhere. That's the one thing you can do. <laughs> you only need a ball, right? That is right. You only need a ball, nothing else. You don't even need shoes if you're in the beach. <laughs> chit, chit, chit. Mine probably ends up on the horizon, on you know, in the water. I could go get it or something <laughs> along those lines. So uh, we've we, we've got Casa FC, fantastic work in the community. We've got education production for scholarships. We've got. We've got a list as long as your arm in everything you do with health and well-being. And, 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 and it's almost like you have produced CASA and, it, and, it, and its other partnerships uh, mm. as, a, as a home, a family for someone. Is that, was that part of your mission or your vision to produce coming, coming down the road 10 years later? Because that's what, I'm, that's what you're portraying to me and that's the feeling I'm, 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 I'm getting, Marabea. Well, I am glad. Thank you. I done my job. <laughs> that is uh, that is a good thing to hear because yes, I want. Uh, obviously, that's why the name Casa, right? Because the whole goal is for you to feel home, to you, for you to feel welcome. And every time somebody asks me, "Hey, can my kid play?" Uh, the first thing I told them, "Come and check it out. If your kid likes it, if you like it, then you're at the right place." because we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable, that you feel home, that you want to be here. And that is definitely what CASA means, and that is what we are. And when it comes to uh, our coaches, for example, our coaches are doing it because they're passionate about it, because they wanna help, because they wanna make a difference. So being a coach out here in CASA means a totally different thing than being a coach probably anywhere, anywhere else. Of course, I'm biased, but that is, honestly what i think well you know in, in in a lot of clubs mission statements vision statements they all say the same thing uh, there's a there's a million organizations out there that, that that live by that and 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 produce that on my doorstep there's several fantastic organizations as well in today's uh, chat with you i can actually feel it uh mm. I've, I've i've not necessarily been around it but you know speaking to people in your good self i can actually you know feel it so 
uh, if everybody's looking for a home, looking for a family, mm. looking to 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 uh, have have some uh, a bit of daylight for a future, whether it be on or off the field, uh, yeah. Casa Marabella is for you. Make sure you get in touch with them. I do have to say that on 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 the screen today, I, I'm going to apologise to several people that have put up questions. And, um, and maybe I asked some of them, and but not all of them. And I can assure you there was a lot um, and a lot of compliment <laughs> out there today. So my apologies for not getting through them. Mm. I know that you are super, super busy and you need me to get out your way. But <laughs> I, 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 I want to say that our paths will, unfortunately for you, cross because Coming on our show at a later date, we will have Wilma um, and Megan from the Colorado Soccer Foundation. And I do know that we will be connecting with FC Denver as well. And that comes back to your map, because even though we're on next door neighbours, um, we you didn't even know until we spoke to each other about how that connection is. You've got more stories to tell. I know. I'm going to ask you if you come back on the show later on this year and just check in with us, oh. if that is cool. And, of course. Um, My pleasure. <laughs> I've spoken too much. That's, that's bad interviewing, but, you know, I don't care. I'm Richie English, <laughs> roaring uncut. I cannot thank you enough. I, 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 I can't. I can't. Uh, and again, the apologies to everyone uh, for not, uh, you know, asking several questions, but I, I think we get the picture. I can't let you go without asking a few quick fire five questions hey, uh, bring it <laughs> i wrote a few down but i'm going to change a few from what you've oh. said so, <laughs> so on the fly totally raw and uncut those are uh, the best those ones. are the best when you're doing the fly those are the best so i'm ready let's go <laughs> only proves that i do listen to to what people say because i can rattle it off all day you know that anyway so um <laughs> what they, what's your favorite soccer team oh man <laughs> i will get in That's trouble if one. i even oh. answer that yeah i know i know oh, go ahead. but you know all I'll my kiddos go, go for ahead. one or the other so <laughs> I totally get in trouble if I answer Barcelona or Madrid. By the way, which they're amazing teams, but I can't pick. I can't. I can't. I like good soccer. How about that? I love good soccer. So whoever is playing good soccer, I love. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to backtrack real quick because I know you've got to go. Your first question, I'm going to backtrack. What's your favorite two soccer teams? <laughs> All right. Barcelona, Real Madrid. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Moving on, next question. Brilliant. I told you I've got your back. We'll work, we'll work together, no problem. Um, you, you, you didn't set out to be a role model, but through your learning period over that time, what do you think that you brought to the table to become the role model you are? That is a deep question. Uh, <laughs> you know... You just try to you do your best every day, right? And uh, along the way, if somebody thinks that you are doing what is right and they want to look up to you, it feels amazing. It feels good. Because then if anybody wants to look up to you, it feels like you are doing the right thing. And in this case, I am proud at, to this day. I am proud of everything we have done. And if anyone out there thinks that I am their role model, thank you. Thank you because you validate everything that I do. So, yeah. If anybody's got a problem with that, they need to come see me because if we need to say <laughs> what is a role model and how it is, then they can come and see me and I'm pointing them in your direction. There's your blueprint. Get on with it. Good luck. Um, okay. Uh, I always do a food question. And I know uh, cuisine all over the world is fantastic. Um, you can only, we're not doing a buffet. One particular dish that you would, you would say, hey, I've got people oh. coming around. What? I know you can do a buffet. I know that. But one thing you go, <laughs> right, 
That's what they're having. One thing, there's a, that's a tough one there, really. <laughs> I love to cook. I, I consider myself a chef, by the way. <laughs> I love cooking. I love it. I love it. And I can cook Italian, Mexican, because I love doing it. Uh, but you know what? Everybody likes my pasta. So I guess I would stay with that. Uh, pasta. Uh, I, I make some killer chicken pesto pasta. And apparently, apparently I do, because everybody loves it. So there you go. I'll stay with that. There we go. The, anytime, the gets on. anytime think, you want to, you are welcome. <laughs> thank you very much. I did have I did have chef on the list. I've got to add that now. It, it just goes <laughs> even longer, doesn't it? Uh, I'm going to do my fourth question. Have you ever been? And I love asking this one. Have you ever been anywhere? Could be, could be any any other country or even somebody's house. Uh, name no names. That you've been offered um, a food, part of the cuisine, and you've looked at it and gone. I don't know about that. And then you've actually sampled it and gone, that's all right. Uh, Iceland. Iceland. Uh, Iceland. The food, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Iceland. Iceland. I'm sorry. It, it wasn't, wasn't great. great. Okay. It wasn't great. But uh, I did go to this one restaurant uh, where I started and I was super nervous to have it because we had been there for a couple of days and we tried different foods and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. But then in this one restaurant, I, I started eating it and I'm like, mm, it's all right. And the more I ate it, I was like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> so Iceland has been a surprise to me. Yes, that, that, the food, the food there wasn't that great. And then I found one place that I liked. So there you go. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Strange things in strange... I could tell you a lot about the English cuisine, but, you know, we're not going to go down that road. So, oh, I need to talk to you about Iceland. I've got uh, a little programme going out there, uh, which may be educational and involves soccer as well. So I'll touch base with you on that at a later date. My last question. My last question. Probably the toughest. Mm. Um, Two-sided. Which gives you the most pleasure, the greatest satisfaction with, within the sport and the education uh, uh, programs? The fantastic. Would it to see be uh, sorry? Would it be to see somebody being high education scholar and a future leader, or of, of whatever they go into, or is it? on the field to see them become maybe playing for their country, playing for a professional. If you had to bat, which one would you pick? Ooh. Really tough one. I'm sorry. Oh, Richard, is this what we're living off with? Are oh, you killing me? Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, sorry. If we can combine them. <laughs> if we could combine them, it'd be great. Uh, I mean, somebody playing for their country is pretty amazing. You can't really beat that. If you can get somebody to do that, that that is everybody's ultimate goal, to represent your country, to represent your people. Uh, there's nothing like it. Uh, so if uh, any of our kiddos are able to do that, I'd be beyond proud. But, but. Uh, any of our kiddos that are not able to do that and are getting an education from Duke University or Harvard or deepest schools in the country, outside the country, goodness, how can you not be proud? So, Richard, you're killing me with that one. You are. <laughs> That's not a good one to live with. But uh, it's definitely right, that... something to be proud of. Okay, so question number one was I'll let you pick two teams you did. So the same would apply to question number five. Uh, it gives you great fat satisfaction to combine the two together and off you of go. Course. Brilliant. Uh, on the field yeah. and off the field. We can yeah. leave it at that. Um, yeah. I'm going to um, get kicked out of the studio right <laughs> now. And I, I, I just want, if, if uh, everybody could spare a spare a moment for me i'd just like to say that um uh, the inspiration that you've provided in this in the show today under the tragedy and catastrophe that has happened recently within our colorado communities um hopefully this this show with the inspirational maribaya has given us some comfort in in what we are in in, in into what we should be uh, as, as 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 people 
and uh, Sporting Denver's thoughts go out to our community up there in Boulder and uh, law enforcement. So this this, this show is dedicated to you. Um, Marabella, I, uh, I, I'm going to get kicked out now. I'm off now. Uh, I'm going to leave you if you would be um, uh, good enough to leave a message uh, for all our viewers and all our followers. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much love, Chris. Uh, I really appreciate you having us here. And uh, everybody, you know you are welcome. Casa is open open doors for anybody you're welcome to join us please check us out on facebook instagram message us and you are welcome Matt's fit same thing uh we are here for the community we are here for you so come check us out uh we are very grateful and thankful for everything that we have accomplished to this day and there's more to come um of course uh we are very very uh thankful and we want to be here for everyone and to the Boulder community, my, my more sincere apologies. I hope everybody can recover and um, be strong and be there for each other. Thank you. <laughs>